Now, now that we have batteries and all the microphones, we can begin. <laughs> good evening. It's so good to see you all tonight. My name is Joe Marchetti. I'm the music minister here at Tannehill Valley Baptist Church, and I'm so glad that you all have come out to see our children uh, perform their musical, It's Cool in the Furnace. And this musical is based off a story in the Bible in the Old Testament from the book of Daniel about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fantastic names, I know, who were loyal to God, the true God, and that was going to cost them. If you know the story in the Bible, you know that King Nebuchadnezzar was going to have a very serious punishment for anyone that did not bow down to his, his idols, his false gods. And if you're not familiar with the story, I won't go any further, so I don't ruin it. But this is a story that reminds us of sometimes the cost of being a follower of God. And that if we have faith in Jesus, sometimes it's difficult, sometimes we face hardships. But in the end, uh, God rewards those who are faithful to him. So we're so glad that you are with us tonight, and we hope you enjoy our program this evening. It's Cool in the Furnace. Daniel, and I'm here to tell you a story. It's a really great story, and it happened to me and three of my friends. Shout out. Meshach. And Abednego. Yes, Abednego. saying, this story happened when my friends and I lived in Jerusalem. It seemed the people of our country were tired of paying tribute to the king 
of Babylon, the country next to us. So we stopped paying the tax, which was fine for us, but not so good for the king next door. We didn't know too much about this neighbor of ours, except that his name was Nebuchadnezzar. We'd, uh, we'd heard that we'd, we'd heard that he'd done great digs for his country, and we'd also heard that he had a very bad temper. Your Majesty, Your Majesty, I've gone over the tax records three times. The people of Israel haven't paid their taxes this year. They say they're not going to pay him at all anymore. What do you mean they aren't going to pay the tax anymore? Of course they're going to pay it. Of course, of, of course. course. What? Um. <laughs> they must pay it. They must, they, they must. must. What makes them think they can just stop paying a tax just because they don't like, like it? Well, we'll see who doesn't pay taxes. Get my horse. The horse, the horse. Get my army. The army, the army. Get out of my way. We're going to Judah. Nebuchadnezzar did come to Judah, and there, were, there was a terrible battle. And we were all taken prisoner and made to go live in Babylon.
When we finally got to Babylon, we found out that Nebuchadnezzar really wasn't such a bad king after all. He gave us a nice place to live. Yay! He sent us to school. Boo! He gave us nice clothes. Yay! He gave us all right neat haircuts. Boo! He offered us goodies from his dinner table. No, no, our folks had taught us not to eat that kind of food, so he taught the palace guards into letting us have the food we've been taught to eat at home. Then later, when we were called before the king, he said we were the strongest and wisest of all the boys he captured. He was very pleased with us. Yay! With just goes to show, it pays... going fine until one night the king had a bad dream. It frightened him so much that he woke up, but then he couldn't remember what he had dreamed. That made him angry, and you know Nebuchadnezzar could get very angry. Up, up, everybody up. I've had a bad dream. A bad dream, your majesty? A bad dream? No, no, not just a dream, but a nightmare. I haven't had a wink of sleep since three o'clock, and if I can't sleep, up! Get the magicians! The get magicians. the magicians! Get, um, get the astrologers! Get, get the astrologers. astrologers! Get the wise men! Get, get the, the wise men. men! Get my mommy! Get her mommy! And get them now! They came screaming from everywhere, bowing and scraping and shivering and wondering what the king was angry about this time. a bad dream now I can't remember what it was. So I want you to tell me what it was and what it means. And now, 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 I want to know right now. He expects us to tell him what his dream was? 
O oh, great and wonderful king, there must be some mistake. You must tell us the dream, and then we can tell you its meaning. Me? Tell you? Ha! What are you if I have to tell you everything? You think that I pay you so I can do all the work? Ha! I called you, you here to tell me two things. One, what I dreamed, and two, what it means. Now if you tell me what I dreamed and what it means, I will give you great riches and honor. But if you don't tell me what I dreamed, I'll have you cut into little pieces. Now get busy! Between the king shouting and the wise men's railing, it wasn't long before everyone in the whole palace knew about the problem. As a last resort, they sent someone to ask me if I could help. Well, I interpreted dreams, but I had never been called on to tell someone what they had dreamed. So I went to my friends, shout out Meshach and Abednego. We talked about dreams for a long time. Then we prayed, prayed that our God would tell us what the king's dream what was and what it meant.
my wise men. Why hasn't anyone told me anything? Oh, I knew they couldn't do it. E worthless, every one of them is. Useless, useless. Oh, you can't get good help anymore. <laughs> Everybody takes advantage of you when you're old and forgetful. Nobody loves me. If I could remember the dream myself, I wouldn't need them. Oh, I'll have their heads. How? King Nebuchadnezzar? Huh? Huh? Who are you? I'm Daniel, one of the captives from Judah. Huh? Huh? Oh, why? Uh, oh, yes, I remember you. What do you want? I've come to tell you about your dream. You what? I've come to tell you what you dreamed. Your wise men could not possibly answer your questions, and I couldn't answer them by myself, but the God my friends and I worship can. Well, what does this God of yours tell you? He told me about your dream, and this is how it went. You dreamed of a large statue, and the, and the statue was made of gold and silver and brass and iron and clay. Yes, I'm beginning to remember it now, but there's more. Tell me the rest. Then a big stone broke the feet of the statue and, and fell and was broken into a thousand pieces. Then the stone changed into a mountain, covering the whole land. Yes, that was my dream. I remember it all now. And you say this, go oh, right. Um, yeah. um, now, well, Daniel, you've answered the hardest question. Now let's see if you can tell me what it means. It's a prediction of the future. You are a good king, and you're the god in the statue. But the kingdom to follow you will not all be good. Some of them will be like silver, and some like brass, and some like iron, and some like clay. And they will all be destroyed. Then God will set up a kingdom which will not be destroyed, but will be like the mountain, and it will cover the, cover the whole land and last forever. This is the most astonishing thing I've ever heard. And you say this God of yours revealed this to you? Yes. Well, Daniel, you and your friends will have high places in my government, and I will even spare the wise men. What do you think about that? And I'll set down a decree so that all my people know about your God. This is my decree. Let the people praise, let the people praise God! It was a great day. Everything was going fine for a while. Then the king got a bright idea. I just got a great idea. I am going to call all the princes and the governors and the captains and the judges and the treasurers and the counselors and the sheriffs and the rulers of all the provinces to come to the dedication of the image which I, the king, will set up. And that's exactly what he did. But that wasn't all. At the dedication, he made an announcement. Now hear this, all the captains, I mean, all of the captains and the judges and the treasurers and the counselors and the sheriffs of, and the rules from this time on, whenever you hear the sound of the pipe and the lyrics and the sultry and the harp and the bagpipe, you will bow down to the image which I, the king, have set up, or I will have you thrown 
into the burning, fiery furnace. We couldn't believe our ears. We liked the king, and he had been very kind to us, but we could not obey his law. We couldn't bow down to a statue. We worshiped the one true God, and his law said, do not worship idols. It was a very hard decision, but we knew what we had to do. Your Majesty. King, did you know that some of the Hebrews are refusing to bow down to your image? Yes, it's true. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego won't do it. Did you know that? The king didn't know, so he called Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego to come before him. Now, boys, is it true that you're not bound down to my image? Now, don't answer too quickly. I want to be fair. I'll give you another chance. If you bow down now, I will forgive you and everything will be fine, okay? But if you refuse, you will be thrown into the furnace and there is no God that will be able to save you. What? 
You refuse? Ah, well, that's how you repay my kindness. Ah, heat the furnace seven times hotter than ever before. And then tie those boys in knots tightly. Show them no mercy and throw them into the furnace. So they took my friends and threw them in. And then, well, then something very strange began to happen. Nebuchadnezzar bent down to get a good look inside the furnace. And then he bent lower to get a better look because he couldn't believe what he saw. other men were to cool right off when we came in. Now God takes care of those who trust and we know God will care for us. Just picked as they sing. There is Nebuchadnezzar staring into the furnace and not believing what he sees. And there are crowds staring at Nebuchadnezzar. And there is the furnace, and it is so hot and glowing. And
and inside the furnace are my three friends. But are they in trouble? Are they in pain? No, sir, they're having a ball. The furnace is not facing them one bit. They are enjoying it, and that is making the king very nervous. And there is something else that is making him even more nervous than that. There are four people in the furnace. The king put in three, but now there are four. Nebuchadnezzar ha has counted them carefully, and he cannot understand how or why. Simple. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego trusted their God to be with them. And he is right there in that furnace. Now the king has a problem. If this God can save those boys, what would he do with a to a hot-headed king? So what is the king to do? He can't even get their attention. The boys just, just look at each other and smile as if to say, this furnace isn't so hot. In fact, this furnace is cool. And you know what? They did. They came out of the furnace and marched right up to the king. I take it back. Everything I said about your God not being able to deliver you, he is able. Oh, have I been a foolish king. I let my anger run away with me, but I won't do that again. I have learned my lesson. From now on, I will worship the one true God. And I, no. I'll make a law. Yes, I will set down a decree that no man is to ever say anything against your God, or I'll have him cut into little pieces, and I'll, 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 I'll just try to remember my promise. <laughs> no, no. And now I'll, I'll just promote you to high positions in the land of Babylon. Now let us all remember there is but one true God, and we are to be true to him and praise him with everything we have. And, or I'll, how, how, I mean, I'll just try to remember my promise. Now, now let us all praise God.
Let's give them another round of applause. Good job, kids. <laughs> Boys and girls, I am so proud of you all. You have all worked so hard, and it has been such a joy to get to uh, direct this musical. And y'all can go ahead and have a seat for just a minute. And this has been especially fun for me because when I was a kid, I was Daniel in this very play. But it gets even better. When my mother was a child, she was also in this play. So I think it's safe to stay, say that this musical has stood the test of time. Uh, and it's been such a joy getting able to direct it with this wonderful group of kids. And they've done such a fantastic job. And it's really, really been uh, wonderful. I want to take another minute to say a big, big thank you to all of my helpers, Miss Lori Heath and uh, Ashley Hill, who have helped me each week in uh, preparing for this. And also uh, Kelly Bridges, who's right, right there. She's helped me a lot as well. And I want to say a big thank you also to our AV team. They are always up at the balcony, but they do a lot behind the scenes. We have Mr. Eddie Heath, who ran sound, Caleb Lyle, who ran our live stream, and my amazing wife, Abigail, who ran the slideshow for the kids. So thank you all, helpers in AV. <clears throat> I want to take a few minutes to um, kind of explain a little bit uh, why, or one of the reasons why we decided to do this particular musical. Now, I know it's Christmas time, and a lot of you maybe were expecting a musical that was specifically about Christmas with the wise men and the shepherds and baby Jesus, and maybe you're thinking, well, why, why do this particular story from the Old Testament? Well, one, it is from the Bible, so you can't go wrong, but it is a really good story that reminds us as Christians, that trusting, to, to trusting God through adversity. And if we want to relate this to Christmas, we can think about Mary and Joseph and all the adversity that they had to go through in being the earthly parents of Jesus Christ and the, the ways they had to trust God even when it was difficult. And in this, this story, of course, in the Old Testament, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they believed in God. And in order to stay faithful to God, they had to face the fiery furnace. And of course, the Lord delivered them. But even greater than Mary and Joseph, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego is our Savior, Jesus Christ, who came to earth and took on the form of a man and had to go through more adversity than we could ever imagine. He faced all of the hardships that we have in this life, but he never sinned, and he went through the greatest hardship of all, and that is to go to the cross. He died on the cross in our place to pay for our sins. And he rose again from the dead so that if we have faith in him, we can have eternal life. And if we have faith in him, sometimes, like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, it calls us to do hard things. But God promises to reward us for our faithfulness. And sometimes we don't see that reward right away. Sometimes we don't even see it in our lifetime. But as believers, as believers in Jesus Christ, we have the ultimate reward, and that is eternal life with him in heaven. I want to read to us now from another passage in the Old Testament that is such a good reminder to us to trust in Jesus even through the difficult times. This is from Isaiah 43. The Lord, speaking through the prophet, says this, But now thus says the Lord who created you, O Jacob, and he who formed you, O Israel, Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name, you are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned, nor shall the flame scorch you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. And those words are true for us today. Notice it says, when you walk through the fire, when you pass through the waters, yes, we will face hardships, but the Lord promises to be with us. In the words of Jesus, he said, in this world, you will have tribulation, but take heart, for I have overcome the world. And so I want to say this all to us tonight, to remember this Christmas season, that we, why we celebrate is our Savior, Jesus. And whatever hardships we are facing, Christ is with us always. And if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Savior, you can know him even this day if you repent of your sins and place your trust in him to have eternal life.
I thank you again for coming out this evening. Um, I want to say a prayer, and then we can get ready to go to the fellowship hall to have some cookies and hot chocolate and other goodies. So um, let's bow our heads and pray, and then we can uh, begin to head that direction, unless Brother John has any other instructions for us. All right. Well, let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we are so grateful for this opportunity that we have to hear a story from the Bible told through this musical, and I thank you especially, Lord, for these children who have put in so much hard work to put on this show for their parents and their friends. And God, we praise you that, like the three in this story, we know that you were with us always, that you will be with us even to the very end. So Lord, please be with us. Give us peace and give us joy that we would uh, rejoice in you and in your presence, especially this Christmas season, as we remember our Savior Jesus. Thank you for um, the hospitality team who has prepared the food that we're about to eat. Please bless it and nourish our bodies with it and help us to enjoy the fellowship now together. We ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Thank you all again. Head on to the good stuff. (laughs) 